Have you ever had a dream so vivid you thought it was real? Some of that was played with in patch 8.3. When the dream realm of Nilotha bled into Azeroth, it became our reality. But when Lazoth was defeated, did anyone ask if we actually woke up? Did we wake up? We were so wrapped up with ending the, you know, the end of the war, the hunt for Sylvanas, that we really didn't stop to think about how many of us still had the gift of Nazoth. The veil was shattered, our leaders were taken, pitching us into yet another crisis. Blindsided by something that nobody saw coming, other than the old gods, drove us into another weird dreamlike realm, taken away from our responsibilities, away from Azeroth. We've had nowhere to look except for the place that our enemies want us to, the place that our enemies knew we were going to be going. Today, in true Mass Effect indoctrination theory glory, we're going to take a big, big huff of that copium pipe, and we're going to dive into Nizoth. And we're also going to dive into Skillshare, today's sponsor, where today we're just going to learn game development. And if you're one of the first thousand to follow my link down below, then you're going to get a month of Skillshare Premium for free. So you can learn that game dev for free. Okay, Michael Murr, he wants to teach you programming and Unity. And look, from somebody like myself, who kind of did super hardcore, kind of boring custom engine programming stuff in Uni, which, I mean, it's actually quite cool, but it's not that relevant to just making a game in Unity. So let me tell you, if you're starting out, this is what you want to learn. Plus, you're learning by doing, and that is the best. I mean, what better way to learn C Sharp than to script something in Unity? Plus, Michael's courses are on Unity 2020 and 2021. Now, these are resources that really didn't exist much when I or my friends were starting off. And believe me, you could swap my years at university for this. Like, if I could, I would. So take uh, some of Michael's courses, do some game jams yourself, and then meet up at your local game dev scene, you know? There's almost certainly one. Now, these are great for beginners. They'll take you right through. They're awesome. He's got 2D, he's got 3D, building an RPG. It's just an awesome resource, and you can get started on Skillshare today. So what better way than to, you know, get that free month by following my link down below, hop into Unity, which you can download for free, and just have some fun. So do that, and let's go. There's something strange about World of Warcraft right now. People feel distant from a setting they once called home. Things are confusing. We've spent the last year questioning, can it all be real? We've been feeling like we're continually being used as pawns in other people's plans. And now we're in this strange Shadowlands place. The villains take shapes that we recognize, but their motivations are strange and otherworldly. It became abundantly clear that Nazoth was prepping us for something big throughout the Fourth War. Now, in the Crucible of Storms, if we defeat Unat, he tells Nazoth that we are worthy. But if we wipe, he tells Nazoth, quote, we will find others to open the way. Unat didn't say your way. He said the way. Well, what if, if we think about how Void works, where it can not necessarily predict what's going to happen, but it can see everything that could happen, could we maybe say that this way is actually a path that has been building up since the gates of Ankarash. Cthulhu heralded in this age of old god insanity. Then, of course, we defeated yogg saron the god of death, and people started to wonder, you know, hmm, why could these titans only be imprisoned? Why couldn't they just have been destroyed? Then we learned the lore about them being so deep in the planet that the titans would pretty much murder Azeroth, kill her, if they took those old gods out. But then we must think, perhaps their death, at the moment of their death, is all part of the plan. Because ultimately, these old gods did start to work together, and the most intelligent of all the old gods is Nazoth. Shortly after the god of death was dealt with, Nazoth instigated the Hour of Twilight, which was the prophesied moment that the old gods would break free from their prisons and return to wipe us all out. Garrosh, of course, finally destroyed the rotten heart of Yasharsh, freeing him from Pandaria 
leaving only Nizoth left, the only undefeated in combat old god on Azeroth. And I want you to think about that prophesized Hour of Twilight again, and where a part of that prophecy was all of the old gods being free from their prison to take us out. It didn't really happen like that, did it? But it could. It could still happen and still fit the prophecy. When asked if the old gods were dead, we were told by Steve Denuser that yes, just like how mortals die, are dead, and go to the Shadowlands, which is the home place where mortals go when they die, the old gods died. And they went home. Their essence went home. They're free. That's the only way that you can remove the essence of an old god from Azeroth, while still keeping Azeroth alive. It's not having Amon Thul ripping a chunk of the planet out. It's having a handful of highly trained individuals go in and remove the old god. But in removing them, I do believe we freed them. In island expeditions, then, it's fun having the Twilight Dragons happily proclaim that the dawn of twilight had come. What is that, the dawn of the hour of twilight? Was Nizoth's whole gambit supposed to be the hour of twilight? Perhaps not. I mean, all that was left was for Nizoth to manifest his dream in Azeroth and then set the stage for Void's glorious return. Things went a bit different but I believe the old god's plan is still very, very much in play. The enemy infiltration document tells us precisely what death thinks of Void, and compared to any other cosmological force, I do think that death, and in this case, Zoval, he's got the best spy network in the business. Now, it all but welcomed the Nathrezim with open arms. So preoccupied was Void with their thousand truths that they ignored the lies sown in their midst. It was decently easy to work out what was going on with them. Now, everything that has happened since Nihilotha, from Bolvar and Sylvanus right through to Zareth Mortis, it could be considered the Jailer's Ark. But I do think there's another interpretation here. It could also be called the Dawn of Twilight. I think the final hours are in fact upon us. Let's say it's true. And Nizoth's hyper lame end wasn't really the end. I mean, he dies. He's, his essence is free. It goes home. Maybe that means it's time for him to really kick off his plan. Now that him and the other Azerothian old gods are all free together. Now, think about, think of the crazy nature of how Void and the cosmos all just sort, sort of works. Nihilotha isn't just a place. It's another dimension, but it's one that can be so close to ours that barely an inch separates them. They can almost cross-dissolve into each other, as shown in 8.3. Of course, this is no surprise. Existing between realities is fundamental old god lore, and it is the truth of the Void. Here is a quote. There is no sharp distinction between the real and the unreal. That's from the puzzle box of yogg Saron, and that's exactly how Void operates. Here's another one. Do you dream while you sleep, or is it an escape from the horrors of reality? It's still there, only pushed back a little. Then, we have all four old gods apparently dead, but definitely returned to Void. It's clearly building to something, everyone. And Nazoth told us this much himself. All eyes shall be opened. We're literally sleepwalking into whatever Void's true plan is. There will be a moment, perhaps in the Dragon Isles, or wherever we next end up, a moment where we wake up and it clicks. Void's plan comes together. In the land of Nihilotha, there is only sleep. One from which we perhaps haven't truly awoken. When I just said awoken, do I mean, like, Commander Shepard and indoctrination theory is true and you were actually indoctrinated by the Reapers the whole time, as a sort of copium to Mass Effect 3's ending, or do I mean that in a different way? You know, awoke, as in, it's finally clicked for us and we realize what's going on, and we're no longer pawns. 
Well, the thing about the void is it sees all realities, but it doesn't know which one is going to be true. And that very much begs the question, why have they been so accurate and what are they doing with the information they have access to? Here's a quote. The veil wanes, his crown will open the way. We all, of course, literally saw that happen in Ice Crown. Why are they so accurate? Why are they saying all these things? Because surely if they're saying that, then that means they know we are going to the Shadowlands, that that is going to happen. And surely if they're going to see that future that we partake in, that they also know that Nazoth gets defeated. I think it's because all these whispers, all these prophecies, these are series of events that either the Void is banking on or that are part of the Void's plan. And all the infinite realities that they can perceive, I think the one we hear about is the one they're really fixated on. It's the fun thing. Void can't help itself. I mean, think of Illyria's void thoughts whenever she met Sylvanas, literally in her brain screaming, kill her, kill her, kill her. The void is totally unhinged and self-satisfying. It can't help but tell us its plan. So why, then, did Void tell us about Death's plan and Zoval with such accuracy? Why would Ogmot be sent visions of Sylvanas' plan? Or why did Ilganoth tell us about Anduin serving at the Master's table? It must be that we are still moving through their plan. We are probably all pawns. Look, that's certainly what Legion and BFA have kind of felt like with Void and other forces. By the end of patch 9.2, something will likely happen with Azeroth via Zareth Mortis. We pretty much know that from PTR. Of course, we also, by the end of this expansion, will have restored the Shadowlands pretty much to its original function. I mean, one of the titles is Defender of the Pattern. And of course, we will have defeated Zoval. Now, when you think about this logically for Void, that all might be quite good. Void and Death do indeed share many enemies, and ones like the Titans of Order and the Demons of Fell have mostly been dealt with. So then if we knock out Death, even for a while, we'll be left with Life, Light, and Void as the major active players in the cosmic stage, unless the Titans return. Now, Life is an unknown quantity, likely an loon shaped one insofar as our narrative experience of it's going to go. Well, of course, Light is... Um, well, the Army of Light got torn to shreds on Argus, which leaves only the forces of Urel's militant theocracy. Now, given Zalatath's lines about the Naru being long-lost brethren, I have a sneaky suspicion that the Void thinks it can win outright there, or can maybe flip those Naru into their Void states somehow. And perhaps, in defeating all of these old gods, what we've actually done is free them from their prison, so that they're there in the Void Plane, nice and safe. Now, this theme of us players, us doing more harm than good with our various adventures, that's a constant thing with Void. It happened during the Emerald Nightmare, where we basically introduced the Void. And of course, that is something that paid off during BFA. In BFA, Nazoth predicted our every move. I think he expected his own death. Maybe that's why we were given the gift of Nazoth, so that no matter what, we would carry on his plan, even when he was, say, I don't know, busy being returned home in some sort of essence form, like Blizzard have pretty much said. So, they, they knew we were going to the Shadowlands, they know all of this. So how did they fold the Shadowlands into their plans? Who knows? But what we do know is that the gift of Nazoth has never canonically been removed. Which then means that assuming Blizzard aren't just completely dropping plot points, that it has been carried into Zareth Mortis, which is a place that is utterly swimming in the magics of creation. We can't know the plan yet, but we are almost certainly unwitting participants in it. We exist within the fever dream schemes of the Void Lords and their servants. We have gone to great length to kill the old gods, but it seems like all we really did was send them back home to the Void. 
and in a way where we would then continue to serve their plan, as evidenced by us being given the gift of Nazoth, and it very much seeming like Nazoth probably knew he was going to bite the bullet. They were, I think, never meant to win on Azeroth. I mean, they, they were, but failing a victory, what, you know, how are you going to win out of defeat? And thematically speaking, or, well, not thematically, but what makes sense for the character of Nazoth, always has been finding victory in defeat working out how can I how can I make a loss into a win? How can I turn the tables? Because it's Nazoth. He's the mastermind. He's the orchestrator. So if all this is true, and we've beaten them, and that's a part of their plan, and we're still carrying out their plan, which I think is probably the case, then what the hell comes next? Well, I think, to fold it right back to the early part of this video, a part of that Hour of Twilight prophecy is them all coming back. Come on, Blizzard aren't just going to give it to us piecemeal. So there's a way where they could still make that Hour of Twilight prophecy come true, with them all coming back all at once. And I think it could kind of happen soon. You see, we've got two leads in this. The first is going to take a whole other video explaining why Azeroth is kind of the center of the cosmos. And we're hammering that video out literally as we speak. The team's on it. We're on it. It's, it's going to be cool. The second thing we've already talked about on the channel when we had it confirmed that there will be a, basically a huge war between the light and the void in our future. The thing is now, uh, you know, we're coming to the end of the Shadowlands, so perhaps the time where all eyes are opened will draw near. So are we going to be the ones realizing we've been asleep for the past two years, working towards Void's ultimate victory? Do you know what the funny thing is? This is sort of I mean, obviously part of that video, but literally the Prophet Velen thinks this is going to happen soon. And Blizzard announced that to us in the form of an update they very recently made on their website. Is that them updating their website ahead of a new expansion reveal? Come on. There's got to be more going on here than we think. So, that's it for today's video. If you would like the absolutely gorgeous, classy Griffin pin for our January Patreon, then you need to be on that Patreon tier, um, you know, through the end of this month. And, uh, I mean, hey, if you like Nazoth, you like Tentacles, we do have a pin coming up uh, in one of the next two months that uh, is just that, that I think you'll love as well. Plus, of course, all the lovely art to adorn your gaming den. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Check out the Patreon if you want to give us a hand. With that said, I'll see you next time.